Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Ijema Fab. So today I'll be showing you an easy way to draft your bustier blouse with a shoulder. Some people also call it a neck that bustier. So I already have my vertical measurement drafted out. So this line here will serve as the shoulder line or the starting point. So from here to here is the bust point, which is 10 inches. I also have from the shoulder to here, which is the under bust, 13 inches. I have the waist here. I have the full length or the hip length. And this is the one inch seam allowance. So the first thing I'm going to do now is to impute the bust pan measurement. And the bust pan measurement I'm working with is seven inches divided by two that will give me three and a half inches plus half inch seam allowance so that will be four inches so i'll be marking four inches from this shoulder line all the way down to this point so after marking the four inches i'll be squaring it up to create a straight line with my ruler So the next thing now is to impute the depth. So there are several ways to achieve this. So I'll be using one of the methods, which is subtracting the under bust circumference from the bust circumference. So the bust circumference I'm working with is 36 inches and the under bust circumference is 32 inches. So I'll be subtracting 32 inches from 36 inches. So I'll be left with four inches. So because my paper here is on fold, I'm going to divide the four inches by two. So that will give me two inches. So at the center front here, I'll have to mark one inch here and one inch here. So if after subtracting your under bust from the bust circumference and you have like six inches divided by two, that will give you three inches. So you're going to mark one inch towards the center front and the remaining two inches will be here towards the side. So since I have two inches, I'm just going to mark one inch here and one inch this way so i'm going to mark the same thing on the waist and down here now connect with my ruler to make a straight line so the next thing now is to create the cup or the bust here where the bust is going to sit so on this bust point here i'll be coming down with by half of an inch so I'll go this way, half of an inch, and with my curve or free hand, I'm just going to connect from here to this point and from here to this point. So now we are done with this part. So the reason why I came down by half of an inch here is to avoid pointiness on this boss point or funny looking around this bust point after sewing. So the next thing that we're going to do is also to take our dart at this neckline here and connect it to the bust point. But I wouldn't be connecting it directly on the bust point. I will also go upwards by half of an inch and I'll connect to the dart. So on this neckline, I'll mark one inch here towards the side and one inch this way. And on the bust point, I'm going to take half of an inch upwards. So the next thing I'm going to do now is place my ruler this way and connect from this marking here all the way here. And I'll be repeating the same thing to this side. I'll place my ruler this way and also connect all the way like this. So this is how to draft your straight bust here. So, but before you cut out, you make sure you come here to this curve here and blend and here too, so that you don't find it hard when you're trying to cut out. So the next thing we're going to do now is to work on the shoulder part. So the shoulder measurement I'm working with is 14 inches divided by two, that will give me seven inches. So I'm going to place my tape this way. I need seven inches plus half inch seam allowance. So the half inch is for joining the sleeve to the blouse. So that will give me seven and a half inches. So I'm going to mark seven and a half inches here. Now, take into consideration that I'll be removing this two inches that here. 
So by the time I remove these two inches that I'll be having a shortage on this shoulder. So I need to replace these two inches. So I'll mark two inches plus I need half inch also to join this panel to this panel. So I'll be marking two and half inches. So I'm going to go by it again. Half of the shoulder measurement I'm working with is seven inches plus half inch seam allowance, seven and a half inches. So the half inch is to sew the blouse to the sleeve. Now I'll be taking away two inches from the seven and a half inches. I'll be having a shortage. So I need to replace this two inches back. So I added two inches also plus half inch to sew this panel to this panel. So that's making it two and a half inches here. So now our blouse is almost completed. The next thing now is to mark our armhole depth. But before we do that, on this point, we need to come down by one inch for the shoulder slope. So I'm going to slant here because our shoulders aren't straight. So I'm going to mark from here and connect. So there's a formula for the armhole depth which I'll be leaving on the screen. So the armhole I'm working with is 8 inches, the armhole depth. So this is 8 inches here. So I'm going to come over here and check what I have. I have about 10 and quarter. So to be sure I'm on the safe side, I'm going to also measure 10 and quarter here which is here and I'll connect from here to this marking so this is now my chest line so I'm going to label a chest line so before I create my armhole curl on the chest line I will impute quarter of the bust measurement so quarter of the bust measurement is 9 inches and I'm going to calculate what I have here, which is about quarter of an inch. So that will be nine and quarter. I need to replace this dot here. So that is nine and quarter. Then I'll mark it here. Then I'll be adding two and a half inches seam allowance, which is here. So if you're a beginner, I'll advise you use from three inches seam allowance upwards. On this chest line, I'll be dividing this eight inches into two which is four inches here and i'll come inwards by half of an inch and i'll connect from here to this point and to here so this is for the front armhole the next thing we do is to continue to take the horizontal measurements the quarter of the underboss measurement i'm working with is eight inches plus these two inches that which I need to replace so that will give me 10 inches so I'll mark 10 inches here plus two and a half inches seam allowance so on the waist here quarter of the waist measurement I'm working with eight and a half inches plus two inches here so that will be ten and a half inches plus two and a half inches seam allowance so that will be here and on the hip quarter of the hip measurement i'm working with is nine inches so i have this two inches that to replace so that will give me 11 inches which is here plus two and a half inches seam allowance so that's at the end of this paper so the next thing i'm going to do now is to connect this marking So at the end here, I would advise you go up by one inch or one and a half inches this way. I'll be going up by one inch and mark this way. So from this one inch, I'm going to connect with my curve to meet with this point. So this is to avoid that sharp look after sewing and also to give you a beautiful curve after sewing your blouse. So I'm going to use my curve and connect from here this way all the way to this point so for the neckline I'll advise you cut your panels join them together then 
you now decide the type of neckline you want so our front panel is ready and the next thing is to cut it out Sorry, while drafting, I forgot to indicate that you need to add a half inch seam allowance at the shoulder here to avoid shortage when you're joining your blouse. So this is how the front panel looks like after cutting out. So I have two of this for the side panel and this as a center front. And do not forget to notch the bust, the under bust and the waist when you're transferring to your fabric. So this will help you align them properly when you're sewing. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to move over to the back panel. So I have this for the back panel, so please do not mind the um, joinings here. So I've already gone ahead to mark my zipper allowance of 1 inch. So you could use between 1 inch and 1 and half inches for your zip allowance. Then I've gone ahead to also impute the horizontal measurement, but I'll go over it. So this is going to be the starting line or the shoulder line. This is 10 inches from the shoulder point to the bust point, and this is the waist which is 16 inches from the shoulder point and I have my hip and full length so this is 22 inches and 1 inch for the seat allowance or hemming allowance so the next thing to do now is to impute the bust pan measurement so what I use for the front is the same thing I'm going to also impute for the back so I used 4 inches for the front and I'll be doing that now so I'll mark 4 inches here all the way down so i'm going to connect the markings with a straight line so for the back panel before i impute the dot i'll be coming up on this boss point by one inch then on the waist here i'm going to take half inch on both sides so half inch here and half inch here so the next thing i'm going to do now is to connect this point to this point and here and i'll repeat the same thing from here to this point and this point so for the back that if you want to modify this that you could simply take this that up to the shoulder point here so if you take your dart up to the shoulder point, make sure to add an allowance of one inch to your shoulder measurement before you cut out so as to avoid shortage. So the next thing we're going to do now is to work on the shoulder. So half of the shoulder measurement I'm working with is seven inches plus half inch seam allowance. So this is half inch to join the blouse to the sleeve. So I'm going to mark seven and a half inches here and on this seven and a half inches I'll come down for the shoulder slope by one inch and on this point I'm going to mark the armhole depth which is eight inches so I'll also make sure I have seven and a half inches here so this is where my seven and a half inches is and i'll connect from this point here this way and this will now be our chest line so i'm going to label this chest line so for the back panel you could use any neck width and neck depth of your choice or you could decide to connect this point over just to this point to the shoulder and cut out just like we did for the front then when you're done you can decide a type of neckline you want but i could go ahead to make this three and a half inches width by four 
into it. So I'm going to use my curve to connect from here to this point. And from here, I'll connect to get the shoulder slant. So we're also going to add a half inch seam allowance for the joining of the panels together. So I'll be adding half inch this way. So this half inch is to join the front panel to the back panel. So in order not to forget the width which you use here when you want to cut out the front neckline, you could simply go ahead and indicate three and a half inches here. So the back neck width and the front neck width must always be the same thing. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to take the horizontal measurement. So on the chest line, you can see I'm taking my measurement from this line and not from here. So after the zipper allowance. So on the chest line, I'm going to impute quarter of the bust circumference which is nine inches this way plus two and a half inches seam allowance quarter of the waist circumference is eight and a half inches plus this half inch here and half inch which i need to replace so eight and a half plus one inch will give me nine and a half plus two and a half inches seam allowance and on the hip here quarter of the hip measurement is nine inches plus two and a half inches seam allowance so like i said before it's better you use from three inches upwards as your seam allowance just to be on the safe side so the next thing to do now is to draw our armhole curve so at this point here, I'm going to mark the midpoint, which is four inches. So for the front, we went inwards by half of an inch, but for the back panel, we're not going to go inward. So from this marking here, to meet with this marking here. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to connect this marking. So you can see that the shape of the back panel kind of look funny but don't worry about it so this is because of this dart that we have here so by the time you take away the dart and you join your panels they will fall in place so the next thing to do like we did for the front is to come this way come up here i said one inch or one and a half inches so i use one inch for the front panel so this way and connect to get that curve to this point here the next thing to do now is to cut it out so after cutting this is how the back panel looks like so when you want to cut this or transfer this on your fabric you make sure you're going to have two of this so the back panel will be in two pieces so we've come to the end of this tutorial and I hope it was really helpful to someone out there, especially to the beginners. Please like, share and subscribe.